Hello there. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the abstract management features within Oxford Abstracts. This video is designed to be watched prior to any demo that you have with us, so you can see the ins and outs of the abstract management features and hopefully have some questions ready for us by the time your demo comes. So let's get stuck in. We're going to be talking about the abstract management features, so that entails setting up the submission form, the reviewing form, making decisions on the submissions that you've collected, and we'll also talk about the emails that you can send with the system, and also at the end a little bit about delegate registration. So this is your dashboard for the event. You can see here things like how many submissions you've collected so far, and also the status of your submissions, whether they're open or closed, and the same for reviews and decisions. So first of all, let's get stuck into the uh, setting up of the submission form. So here, when we first set up the event for you, you'll have some default submission form questions. And you can go ahead and edit these questions and even add additional questions. So you can change things like the word limit, and you can preview these questions while you're editing them so you can see how the changes that you're making affect the question. And then at the bottom, we can say we can change things like if the response is shown to the reviewer, or if the response goes into the abstract book, and if you're using one of our conference packages, if the response goes into the program. You can add lots of different types of questions, such as file upload, and also any sorts of questions that you'd typically find on, on forms, such as drop-downs, checkboxes, and radio buttons. You can then preview your submission form to make sure everything looks good. And then once you're happy, we can make the, um, we can open the submissions and then give out the submission link. Once we have our submissions, we'll start to see this. Uh, once we have the submissions open, we'll start to see the submissions coming in to the submissions table. From here, we can see all of the information about who has made that submission, when it was created, and then also any other information around if the submission is in the program, or if the submitter or authors have paid uh, to register for the event. If I click into any of these submissions, I can see all of the responses from the submitter. And as an admin, you can even change the responses as well. Any of these tables can be exported into Excel, so you can gather all of that information on your local computer. You can also email people directly from the tables here. Just by selecting the rows, and then we can choose to email the submitters, authors, or just the presenters. There is also an entire email section. So from here, you can send out um, your emails and you can configure the emails that you send out. So we have two types of emails, automatic emails and manually sent emails. So the automatic emails will be sent out when people submit a uh, incomplete or complete submission or when they edit a submission. And you can go ahead and click into these emails and change the content of the email. You can also add any of these merge fields to the emails and you can also CC or BCC your event notification as well. For the manually sent emails, these are for sending out batches of emails such as acceptance or just a general submission message. And again, we can click into the email and then edit it. And we can also review who is going to be sent the email and we can click into that person's uh, e uh, email address and we can read the full email that will be sent to that person. We also give you logs with the, uh, with the email feature, so you can see what emails you've sent and also 
about who they were sent to and if they've been opened or, or even if people have clicked on links within the email. So next, let's have a look at the reviewing site. So setting up the reviewing form is quite similar. We, again, will give you default questions and you can go ahead and add more questions, as many as you need. A nice feature we have here is that you can view as a reviewer the reviewing form. So assuming that I've assigned my reviewers already, I can choose a reviewer and then I can view exactly what they will see when they log into the system. So you can see it's very easy for them to get started with reviewing. They can see the submission in the middle here and then they can give their grades on the right hand side, write any comments. You can even allow them to write uh, inline comments here. This is great for rework and things like this, so these comments can actually be shown back to the submitters. Once the reviewer has finished, they can actually see a, a summary of their grades. So they can see things like their total grade for each submission and their average grade for each grade question. From the uh, admin side, so let's have a look at how we actually assign the reviewers to the submissions. So there's two ways of doing this. You can either just select some of these submissions and then you can manually assign uh, reviewers to those submissions. The other way is to do an auto assignment and this is where we can go in and essentially allow the system to do the assignments for us. So we give it some parameters in terms of how many reviewers we want per submission, how many submissions per reviewer, and then we can preview those assignments. So here we can see each submission and then the reviewers that the system thinks should be assigned to each submission. And we can even see as well if the categories match. So this is if the category of the submission links or matches with the category that was assigned to the reviewer. And then we can save these assignments once we're happy. And so once those reviewers make those reviews, we can see within the table, if we expand each row, we can see all of the reviews left by the reviewers on that particular submission. And then on the submission row, we can also see the average grade uh, for each reviewer, uh, sorry, for each submission. Okay, so let's move on into the decisions side of things. So in the decisions table, we can see all of the information about the submission and the reviews that were, were given, the average grade, and then we can make a decision as to whether something is accepted or rejected, and if it is accepted, what was it accepted for? And then the, the last part of the abstract management features is the reports and downloads. So we offer a variety of default abstract books that you can download after you've collected your submissions and made your decisions. And I'll just show you an example of one of them here. So this can be downloaded as PDF or Word, a Word document. And you can see you've got the title, authors and affiliations, and then here's the abstract. But you can include any question responses from the submission form that you wish. And then there's just one submission on each page. So as I mentioned, we also have a registration feature. So there's no upfront cost to the registration feature, but it is available with all of our packages. And there is a 2.5% service fee, uh, which is charged on the price of the tickets. And with this, it's very easy to set up payment providers such as Stripe, PayPal, Authorize.net, or you can just use invoicing. And then you can see your submission, or sorry, your registrations once they come in. And there's lots of very helpful features to do with refunding tickets or editing orders once those registrations have been made.
So I won't go into too much detail here as we do have other videos on the topic, but it's just good to be aware that we do have a registration feature. Okay, well thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and hopefully you've got some questions ready for us at the demo. Okay, thanks and bye.